Starship Flight 11 was not just another SpaceX test. You are about to see the precise moment Elon Musk's team unleashed a maneuver so radical, it stunned experts and sent shockwaves through the aerospace world. This evolving flight did not just rewrite Starship's playbook. It risked the entire mission on a guidance experiment no one thought possible. But what drove SpaceX to gamble with their most advanced vehicle yet? And what actually happened in those critical seconds? Ship 38 and Booster 15-2 stood at the heart of Starship Flight 11, representing the final evolution of SpaceX's Block 2 hardware. This pairing was no prototype. Both vehicles had already proven themselves across a series of high-stakes tests, but Flight 11 demanded more. Ship 38, with its gleaming stainless steel hull and upgraded heat shield, was designed to survive the harshest re-entry conditions SpaceX engineers could dream up. Booster 15-2, the workhorse of the Block 2 fleet, carried the latest Raptor engines and control software, setting the stage for the most ambitious guidance trial yet attempted from Starbase. This flight was not just a demonstration, it was the official send-off for Block 2 Starship. Closing a chapter that began with cautious hops and ended with full orbit missions. Ship 38's unique configuration included clusters of heat shield tiles deliberately removed to expose the underlying structure. A bold move to test the system's real-world resilience. Booster 15-2, meanwhile, featured advanced grid fins and a new landing burn sequence gathering data that would shape the future of booster recovery. The launch took place from Pad 1A, the original home of Starship's earliest milestones. After Flight 11, this pad would be retired for upgrades, making this mission the last to fly from its historic surface in its legacy form. Every detail, from the serial numbers to the final checklist, carried the weight of years of development and the promise of what comes next. At its core, Flight 11 was a test of the most advanced Starship and Super Heavy pair. SpaceX had ever assembled, tasked with pushing the limits of reusability, precision, and control. Every Starship test flight carries risk, but Flight 11 raised the bar by design. SpaceX set out with a clear objective, push the boundaries of guidance, navigation, and control under the most punishing conditions ever attempted for a reusable spacecraft. Engineers did not want to just check off another milestone. They wanted to answer the toughest questions left by previous flights, especially after Flight 10's engine failure and heat shield breach. To do that, Ship 38 carried a payload of dummy Starlink satellites simulating the mass and deployment sequence that future operational missions will face. But the real gamble came with the heat shield. Instead of relying on a flawless protective layer, teams deliberately removed clusters of thermal protection tiles. This left sections of stainless steel exposed, inviting the full force of atmospheric re-entry to stress the underlying structure. The goal was to gather data on how much damage the ship could really take and how much margin for error future missions might have. Booster 15-2, meanwhile, was tasked with testing a new landing burn sequence and grid fin control logic, gathering insights for rapid recovery. Both vehicles were expected to operate outside their comfort zones, with the ship's flight computer running the latest version of SpaceX's subsonic guidance algorithms. Every phase of Flight 11 was engineered to expose weaknesses and to force the hardware and software to adapt in real time. By stacking these risks, SpaceX aimed to validate not just individual systems, but the integrated resilience of the entire Starship architecture. The payoff, if the gamble paid off, would be a leap forward in reusability and precision control, critical for future lunar and Mars landings. This was about proving a path to reliable, rapid reuse at scale. 
Put simply, Flight 11 was designed to answer one central question. How much risk can you accept while still returning the vehicle safely and preserving options for future missions? The answers from this test would rewrite flight rules, influence landing strategies, and change how engineers build margin into both software and hardware. At the edge of the upper atmosphere, Ship 38 began its descent with a deliberate roll, setting the stage for a maneuver that would redefine Starship's approach to landing. Instead of falling straight or following the gentle belly flop seen on earlier flights, the vehicle pitched into a sharp bank, its massive flaps angling to catch the onrushing air. This was not a minor adjustment. This was a bold, the sweeping lateral shift, pushing the ship's path far from its initial line. The trajectory arced in a sweeping S-shape, each movement calculated to bleed off speed and realign the ship with a virtual runway, just as future missions will need to do for pinpoint tower catches. As Ship 38 sustained the bank, onboard computers commanded rapid, coordinated movements from all four flaps. The ship's attitude shifted dynamically, with the nose and tail swinging in sync, the hull slicing through denser air as altitude dropped. For several tense seconds, the entire vehicle rode the edge of aerodynamic stability, maintaining just enough lift to guide its path while managing drag to slow descent. Then, at a critical altitude band, Ship 38 counterbanked, with the flaps reversing angle and the hull rolling back in the opposite direction. This final adjustment snapped the trajectory onto the pre-selected corridor, setting up the terminal descent. Every phase, roll, bank, and counterbank was executed in real time, transforming raw telemetry into a ballet of motion that had never been attempted on an orbital-class rocket before. The moment Ship 38 rolled into its banking turn, everything changed. For the first time in Starship's flight history, the vehicle executed a full S-turn, an active, aggressive maneuver that left no doubt this was a leap beyond the gentle belly flops of flights 8 through 10. Instead of simply falling under control, Ship 38's path swept sideways, carving a broad arc across the sky. This was not just for show. The move was designed to mimic the kind of course correction a future starship will need to nail a pinpoint landing or line up with a tower catch at Starbase. No previous starship had attempted such a dramatic lateral shift in real flight, and the difference was instantly obvious to anyone following the mission. Social media erupted as the live telemetry traced the S-curve, with hashtag Starship Flight 11 and hashtag Dynamic Bank trending within minutes. Analysts and fans alike posted side-by-side -side clips comparing the new maneuver to earlier flights, highlighting the sharper angles and longer duration. For the public, it was a jaw-dropping display, a clear visual that SpaceX was rewriting the rules of rocket re-entry in real time. The buzz was not just about technical prowess, it was about witnessing a step into the future, right as it happened. Picture a skydiver twisting their arms to steer through the air, except this skydiver weighs over 100 tons and is falling at supersonic speed. That is the challenge Starship faces as it re-enters the atmosphere. Four massive flaps, two at the nose and two at the tail, work together to control the ship's orientation and slow its descent. Each flap can move independently, adjusting its angle by dozens of degrees in a heartbeat. The real magic happens inside the flight computer. Every few milliseconds, less than the blink of an eye, sensors feed back the ship's position, speed, and angle. The software crunches this flood of data and instantly commands the flaps to pivot. These loop cycles run in under 50 milliseconds, fast enough that the ship can respond to sudden gusts or turbulence before it drifts off course. During the dynamic banking maneuver, the control system switched from high-speed predictive models 
to fine-tuned real-time adjustments. At higher Mach numbers, the flaps act more like gentle rudders, but as the ship slows, their authority grows, allowing sharp banks and S-turns that shape the trajectory. Engineers visualize this with a graph where flap authority starts low at Mach 2, then climbs steeply as the ship nears subsonic speeds. The trick is balancing response time with stability. Too slow, and the ship tumbles. Too fast, and it overcorrects. By blending sensor fusion with adaptive control laws, SpaceX engineers gave ship 38 the reflexes it needed for a maneuver never before seen on an orbital class rocket. Independent analysts wasted no time dissecting the data pouring out of Flight 11. NASASpaceflight.com ran side-by-side -side overlays, matching the S-turns arc to real-time telemetry, and confirming this was a first for Starship at orbital scale. Technical commentators on launch streams pointed to the moment when ship 38's flaps hit near maximum deflection, tracking the vehicle's roll and bank rates against previous flights. KHOU-11 launch coverage described the banking maneuver as a significant shift. Their hosts highlighted the ship's ability to realign for a virtual runway, a move that had only been theorized until now. Social platforms exploded with analysis threads and explainer videos. Viewer counts on live stream recaps and technical breakdowns soared into the hundreds of thousands within hours. Hashtag Dynamic Bank and hashtag Starship Flight 11 were trending globally, with fans and engineers replaying the maneuver frame by frame. Technical YouTube channels released overlays showing the moment ship 38's trajectory snapped into its new path, providing public validation for what had just unfolded. Yet even as the maneuver drew worldwide praise, experienced voices urged caution. Analysts reminded viewers that a single successful test does not guarantee repeatability. The challenge now, they noted, is to prove this level of control across future flights and in a range of real-world conditions. For the moment, though, the consensus was clear. Flight 11 had delivered a breakthrough that could be seen, measured, and replayed by anyone, anywhere. Today, every Starship test shapes real plans for lunar and Mars missions. As engineering boundaries shift, Global eyes stay fixed on each launch. The next leap won't just test metal, it will redefine what is possible. This is the moment where science fiction edges closer to fact. What's your take?